Hello, starting with version 16.08, PLS CAD now has the ability to display subconductor geometry as well as accounting for it in wire and structure clearance checks. In this video, we'll look at the capabilities of this feature and how it can be used. First, it is worth mentioning that this feature can work both in ruling span analysis and finite element, so you do not need to have SAP's capabilities to make use of this feature. To begin, you'll need to either modify a section or visit the sections table. I'll start this example by performing a sections modify command on this section of blue wire in this project. You'll notice now that the sections modify dialog is slightly different at the top where you have the new inputs for selecting the subconductor geometry. Also notice how there is still the field available here for entering the number of subconductors per phase. This is only needed for backwards compatibility with older projects. Going forward, this field isn't needed because the number of subconductors per phase is automatically known when selecting a subconductor geometry. So with this drop-down menu here, for bundle shape, you can select the desired bundle geometry, and we have all the popular options. Two horizontal and vertical, triangular, square or diamond, hexagon, and octagon. And once you select an option with two or more subconductors, this field to the right for bundle spacing lights up. With this field, there are two very important things to note. First, the spacing is entered in units of feet, not inches. So if you have the popular spacing of 18 inches, be sure to enter 1.5 feet and not 18 feet. Second, the bundle spacing is the minimum separation from one subconductor to another and not the bundle diameter. Unless you pick a two horizontal or two vertical bundle, then it will be the same. Otherwise, if you wish to enter the bundle diameter, the bundle spacing can be solved for using these equations. And that's all there is to the input. You can now view the geometry in any of the views, though it's easiest to see in the 3D view. At the end of each insulator, PLS CAD assumes that the center of the bundle will be located there. And at the location, PLS CAD draws a simple yoke plate to better visualize the conductors attached at the structure. And notice how, with showing the wires displaced under a heavy wind condition, that the insulator swings and the subconductor bundle will rotate accordingly so that it aligns with the swing angle of the suspension insulator. For checking clearances from wire to wire or wire to structure, the subconductor geometry is now also automatically being accounted for. Because of the many nuances and uncertainties that can occur within a subconductor geometry, PLS CAD takes the simple conservative approach by assuming an energized circle around the centroid of the bundle equal to the size of the bundle diameter. Take for example a wire-to-wire -wire clearance check using a two-bundle configuration with 18 inches of spacing. Notice how after the report is ran, the graphical markers show how PLS CAD checks the clearance between two wires assuming a circumscribed circle around the bundled centroid of a diameter of 1.5 feet. And I'll also run an example now showing how you can account for the bundle geometry using structure clearance functions as well. Notice how when I run this report, it automatically pulls in the bundle spacing of 1.5 feet I entered into the section. And when I enter in 5 feet of required clearance and run the report for just structure 6, you'll see two markers drawn at the beginning of the span to the nearest structure component. The 3.87 feet is measuring the energized zone of the insulator, and the 3.73 feet is measuring to the 1.5 foot diameter conductor bundle. And these features even work on jumpers as well. If I configure the back span to have the same conductor geometry, then switch on jumpers, then create a jumper at this structure 6. You can see that jumpers will also show the subconductor geometry, and it too will be accounted for in clearance checks both wire to wire and wire to structure. We hope that you'll find this feature and demonstration video helpful for your future projects. Thank you for watching. If you'd like more information about our software, please see our website at www.powerlinesystems.com or contact us at info at To receive a quote for purchase or renewal of your license, please contact sales at powline.com, and for any technical inquiries, please contact support at powline.com. 
Thank you for watching and your interest in our software, the industry standard in overhead line design.